We're in Shanghai at the fourth Shanghai New Energy Conference and Exhibition, and I'm joined today by John Bubel, who's the Director of Marketing for Microelectronics at Mallinckrodt Baker International. John, uh, we've seen significant decreases in the price of cells over the last couple of years, pretty increasing demand on cell manufacturers. How can your performance chemistries, or first of all, I mean, what are performance chemistries, and how can they really help cell manufacturers in this very challenging environment? Sure, David. So, for about 25 years, Mallinckrodt Baker has been serving the needs of the semiconductor industry with what we call performance chemistries, or chemicals that have been uh, formulated specifically by our scientists to meet a, a technical need in the market or a specific customer. So in semiconductor, whether it's an advanced cleaning step or um, an advanced etching step, you know, we have chemistry that's formulated for those specific needs you know, based on our material scientists and our interaction with the customers. So we've taken that know-how from semiconductor and applied it to key steps in the solar manufacturing process where we felt we could help our customers by uh, improving the cell efficiency, which could uh, increase their revenue as they're selling their, their cells by uh, the output, as well as uh, improve their manufacturing efficiency by uh, increasing yields, uh, lowering defectivity, improving throughput in key steps. So that's how we focus you know, with our chemistry uh, and use our, our core competencies you know, that we developed through all these years in semiconductor and have now applied them uh, in the solar market. What are the key process steps being targeted by PV manufacturers in order to boost cell efficiencies at the moment? Well, David, we're focusing on three right now. Uh, the first one being uh, the pre and post emitter oxidation steps, where several years ago we launched our flagship product, PV160, which was the first uh, performance product, as right. we've discussed, uh, brought to the solar market. Based on you know, that technology that we've learned and the interactions with, with our customers, you know, they've requested us uh, to work with them on other key steps, such as wafer texturing or uh, even cleaning steps, which they feel they can improve uh, efficiencies, again, in uh, cell efficiencies and their manufacturing efficiencies compared to what they're doing today with maybe uh, straight acids or uh, non-formulated, non-engineered chemistries. Okay, so they're really looking to sort of, I guess, refine the processes using your, your know-how. Exactly, sense. and the PV160 is a, a great example where bringing a formulated product, an engineered product, to that process step, we've been able to increase our customer cell efficiency by 0.2, 0.3%, which translates into uh, more revenue for them and a very smooth running process. What can performance chemistries do to support these process steps that you've outlined? Well, they can, performance chemistries can really drive up cell efficiency and improve manufacturing efficiency. You know, wafer texturing is, a, is also a great example. Um, our customers really feel that there is more uh, uh, efficiency to be gained in that step by having a very controlled, roughened surface on their wafer after the texturing step. You know, today, some of the uh, processes they use are not so controlled. So they're looking to us to to bring our, uh, our surface chemistry expertise to uh, control the roughening step, make it consistent all the time so they can fine tune up their entire manufacturing process around that and gain efficiency, as well as lower defectivity, which will be an issue as you know, customers go to thinner and thinner wafers in the future. Okay, I mean, we talked a little bit about what's happening now. What, what sort of new chemistries are being introduced you know, for, for new processes in the cell processing? Sure, so you know, PV160 was our, our first introduction to the market, and last year we brought out uh, new versions, or follow-on versions of that chemistry, PV162 and PV200. So PV160 was focused on the inline uh, crystalline silicon manufacturers, and again, they experienced 0.2, 0.3% efficiency gain by using it. PV162 is an improved version of that to continue um, helping them gain more efficiency, maybe an additional 0.1, 0.2%, even over PV160. Uh, PV200 is really focused on the POCO market, where um, we're helping those customers gain uh, further efficiency as well. You mentioned cleaning before. How hmm. about developments in some of the cleaning steps? To take place yeah, our customers really feel there's a, a large opportunity there. So just take a, a wafering, for example, from the time the wafer is cut from the ingot until it's ready for texturing. There's about seven uh, cleaning steps involved there using different kinds of bulk 
uh, bulk process chemistries, different acids and, and detergents. That's a lot of equipment for our customers to use, uh, a lot of opportunity for wafers to break and uh, have uh, yield losses. And plus, it's a lot of uh, waste. It's a lot of waste disposal. So there's certainly EHS concerns with those process steps. Our customers have approached us and said, you know, we think you know, we would like to work with you with Mallinckrodt Baker because of what you've shown us you can do on the uh, emitter optimization side. How can you help us to reduce our, our complexity of our cleaning steps, reduce the cost of ownership of our cleaning steps, and even make them more environmentally uh, benign? Is that always reducing the volume of chemicals? Um, or refining it? Reducing the volume is certainly a, a piece of it. You know, the, the performance chemistries uh, certainly could have a longer bath life, for example, a longer wow. lifetime of usage. So, again, they may look more expensive on a per gallon basis, but uh, looking at the cost of ownership of you know, the lifetime, uh, that the chemistry can be used, the disposal cost, you know, it's, it's a great benefit for our customers. The industry's seen an amazing drop in sell prices lately, uh, fueled by the market. What can performance chemistries do to really help sell manufacturers Hope with this reduction in cost? Our customers are looking at all of their processing steps to lower their manufacturing costs. Um, thinner wafers you know, is a, still a key area. Even though polysilicon uh, prices are dropping, the wafer price is still a significant piece of the overall sell cost. Plus, just the yields you know, out of the ingot itself are, are very low on a percentage basis. So they want to get more wafers out of the ingot they want to reduce the amount of silicon in their cell, but as the wafers get thinner, they're very challenging to, uh, to process, challenging to move uh, through our customers' manufacturing lines. So many uh, chemistries today will actually attack the wafer in the cleaning step, and they'll accentuate defects, which can weaken the wafer at certain points, causing breakage. So if we can bring a performance chemistry that still can do effective cleaning or effective etching, but not uh, be too aggressive to damage the wafer or to weaken it further uh, at, at points on it, we can help our customers improve their yields and really enable the, the processing of thinner wafers. How can MBI, Malibu Faker, really help its customers around the world? Mm. Yeah, I think, David, we're in a great position to do that because of our a long experience in semiconductor and actually in flat panel as well. So we have over 25 years experience you know, serving customers um, in the semiconductor market, for example, which, as we know, started mostly in the U.S., but then started to you know, move to Europe and then obviously now has really uh, been headquartered in, in yeah. Asia. You know, Mallinckrodt Baker invested with our customers in uh, the necessary logistics and supply chain um, uh, requirements to serve our customers globally as well as our global sales and applications team and now we have labs around the world where we can uh, provide technology support to our customers you know, from the US, uh, from Europe as well as several labs in Asia directly. What is Malakot Baker doing specifically on the cost of ownership and material usage? What's happening? You know, several things. Um, for sure Whenever we're developing our new chemistries or improvements to the chemistries we already have in the market, the, you know, the cost equation is, uh, is of equal importance to the technical equation. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you, David. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you, you too.